These are the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. And in this video, we're gonna go through some samples both in low light and in bright light situations. Uh, some features that I like, and hopefully in the end, some reasons if you should get one of these as well. Here, turn off the lights. Turn on. Good. Uh, can I get a small ice matcha latte, please? So firstly, I've always wanted to get myself a pair of Wayfarers, but a couple of years ago when they released their first version, I wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about it. If I should drop another extra $100, $150 on a Wayfarer with additional features. Like any first generation of any technology, there's a big chance that there are more negatives than positives. They're still figuring out the limits of what they can do. So the first generation of the the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses only had five megapixels. The aspect ratio of the video was a little bit smaller. Battery is not that long, as well as the storage on the glasses themselves wasn't that big. It was limited on what you could do. It was doing the things that it advertised to do. You had, you know, a set of sunglasses that had a camera that is connected to an app where you can take photos and POV videos. But I wanted to wait and see how much more of an improvement they could do on the second generation and boy like these is a marked improvement from the first generation so again there are a lot of more technical videos out there really detailing each particular feature but on this video i wanted to give you more of the philosophical questions you should ask yourself when you are thinking about getting one of these ultimately these are a pair of sunglasses so if you are not looking for a pair of sunglasses, and if the sunglasses feature is not great, maybe you should think a little bit more whether getting this particular gadget. Talking about the glasses themselves, they come in two style. The traditional Wayfarer and the traditional headliner. So the Wayfarer is what I have on right now is a little bit of the bigger frame, thicker stems. Although both are unisex, this is a little bit more of a masculine feel. And then the headliner has uh, more rounded frames, a little bit more geared towards like the feminine feel. But again, both are unisex and depending on your facial structure and how your head looks, either can be rocked by anybody. Wayfarers are a very, very classic look. Most head styles fit the classic Wayfarers. Like Ray-Ban has been rocking them for decades because of that classic design. And the smart glasses feature does not veer away too much from that design. Perhaps the stems are a little bit thicker because of the internal gadgetry that it needs to hold, but all in all, these are pretty much the same cut and style as your traditional Wayfarers. We have a bunch of different colors for the actual frame as well as the actual lens. So you can go on the website and check which color fits you the most or which color you like the best. As for the lenses, there's the traditional non-polarized lenses, traditional polarized lenses. And these ones that I have on me are the transition ones because there's something more annoying for me than people that are wearing sunglasses indoors so the good thing about transition lenses is when it's relatively dark like what i have in my apartment right now the lenses are clean but if it's in a bright situation i've now been in the sun for a solid five minutes and this is how dark the transition lenses could get give you a couple of angles in sunlight this is as dark i think as it could get you can cut the sunlight down but it won't be as dark as full-on sunglasses so pretty good and this is how the lens looks like in the shade i'm in prospect park autumn leaves are turning it looks amazing here but they are sunglasses so they should protect your eyes 
from the sun. That's the number one most important feature. So what features do the smart glasses have? Most importantly is the camera. So it has a camera on the left side of your frame. And then on the right side of your frame, there's also, as you can see, you might be able to see it, like there is a camera looking circular device as well, but that's uh, an indicator light. So people understand when you are filming or taking photos so that it's not too intrusive. In terms of the ethics, whether like an inconspicuous camera on you take filming or taking photos is ethical or non-ethical, we all have common sense. So the idea of it is if you're a public place where taking a photo and filming is not intrusive, sure, go ahead. But if you are using the discreteness of the camera with ill intent, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. Here's a little example of taking a picture. You have a little switch up on the right side of the stem. When you press once, it'll take a picture. See that light? And if you hold, it'll stay on, and then you'll hear an activation sound that says that you're filming a video now. The videos have a one minute per video max length, but in the app, you can set it to 30 seconds and 15 seconds as well. I think this is so that you don't fill up your memory quite fast. All the assets, image, and videos will be stored on the glasses until it is imported to the app. Battery life, pretty great. Uh, it is listed as four hours of heavy use. I was listening to a podcast, taking photos and taking videos for this review for almost three hours this afternoon before I ran out of battery. But so the case itself is where you store the camera, but also this is what charges your glasses as well. And you charge the case by USB-C. And yes, I did say that I was listening to podcasts and music through the glasses itself. Uh, I want to talk about a few of the surprising things about these pair of glasses. Most notably will be the speakers. They are remarkably good. I have been using these glasses to listen to my podcast for the past couple of days now. And although they are not as loud as in earbuds or actual headphones, of course, they're coming from the stem of your sunglasses. They are clear and crisp in a normally loud setting like right now i'm walking in the park my podcast is amazing but if i'm listening to my podcast uh, while i'm on my commute like in the train where it gets really loud then i tend to switch to my airpods the other thing that i really like is the voice assist i'm not a voice activated person i tend to use it very simply so the in-ear voice assist feature of the glasses is very useful in this account so if i just want to ask what time it is what's the weather i just say hey meta what's the weather and here a thing, and it tells you the stuff. The five mics integrated all around the frame also makes it capture audio a lot better, particularly in a POV perspective. Right now, we're doing a test between my Sony A6700 and the audio recording on the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. So, in the end, you have open ear audio, you have voice assist function, of course, you have the photo and video functions, as well as the sunglasses. Is the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses worth the cost? We are starting at $299 for the traditional frame with regular glasses, polarized lenses, and some, and some funky colored frames will start at $329. And these glasses that I have on, the transition ones, are $379. Are they worth it? For me, it's a resounding yes, only because I wanted a pair of decent sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses when I drive or when I'm out. 
I've been a fan of the Wayfair cut for a very, very long time. So I was going to get a pair of Wayfair glasses anyway. I was just waiting for my current pair of sunglasses to get too worn out. Or if I lose them, that was the next purchase in line. The way that I justified the additional $150, $200 for the additional features is that even though all of these particular functions can be done a little bit better by your other action cameras or the most important camera that you have on you all the time, your phone, it being on your face with such easy functionalities to activate just encourages you to capture more memories. And that's the most important part is not missing an opportunity for you to be able to take a photo or take a video safely with both your hands free for me was worth it there are still a lot of considerations that you need to do when when you are using gadgets like this the intrusion of privacy in terms of the people that you're taking photos and videos of there is also this misalignment uh, factor that i am still getting used to because the lens is only on one side of the frame and you don't actually have a one is to one view like what you see is not actually what the photo or video you're taking i didn't realize that i have my head tilted a bunch of times because a lot of my photos and videos are a little bit tilted and because the lens is on the left side it's always kind of like look the the camera is always slightly looking to the right so those are the things that can be fixed through practice but also you can do a live view in a slightly workaround way because this smart glasses can also live stream through instagram stories you can see your framing if you aggregate your live view in your instagram stories live in the instagram app but you know it defeats the purpose of just being able to like walk around if you see something that you like tap the button or hold the button to get that image or get that video. It is also always just vertical, which is a little tough for me because I like more landscape. I put most of my videos on YouTube, but this is built for Instagram stories, for TikToks. A lot of people that do more content there or store their videos and photos in that particular format will have this device as a tool that will encourage more creation. If you're looking for a camera first device and you're looking for a POV camera first device, if you're doing like a little bit of behind the scenes when you want to see your hands, unboxing and stuff for a particular vertical format, this can work. But again, this is glasses first, camera second with Bluetooth speakers as well. All those combined might not be the best for each of those particular functions, but the combination, if it works for your day to day, I think it's really worth it. I truly enjoy mine, uh, primarily because it fits my face. I like the way it looks on my face. So without all the bells and whistles, this pair of sunglasses is something that I will enjoy using as well. The image factor is just an amazing addition to my use case because I do love taking photos and videos and this might be another way for me to just walk around, take B-roll, take extra photos and put it in my socials or my videos in a very seamless, non-intrusive, very discreet way. And the open ear Bluetooth speaker function is such a surprise that it works that well. I always have my AirPods on, but sometimes you want to be spatially aware, but this is particularly safe and it sounds really good. As long as it's not too noisy outside, of course, because it's open ear, it works perfectly. All that just makes this purchase for me great. Just the way it is, I think it's worth the money if you are looking to upgrade or have an additional set of glasses, camera, and Bluetooth speakers. That's the quick video. I hope it helps you in the decision-making process of you buying one of these Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses as well. If you found this helpful at all, I hope you subscribe to the channel. If you already have one of these, leave a comment. Let's discuss how you're using it and how you're liking it as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.